All right, good morning, everybody. Hope everyone had a, had a great weekend. Uh, happy Labor Day. We're here. But, right, so, uh, a couple things. You guys know your Chapter 1 quiz is due last night, right? At 1130. I can't, the new system, I can't seem to make it due for midnight. So it's like 1130. Well, it's late enough, right? So, uh, you were able to take that five times. I went through the grades today. It looks like some people took it one time, some people took it five times. Uh, but your highest grade counts, okay? So that is done. We're going to finish chapter two today, and I'll be putting up another quiz that you'll take. Same, we'll do the same thing. You can take it up to five times uh, as well. Today at uh, midnight is, or I think it's 1130, uh, your Google Drive assignment, your collaboration is due. And some people ask, like, how do I submit that? You really don't have to submit it, right? You just have to do it because I'm, I can go out there and check those documents and see who revised them, right? Their revision history will tell me that Taylor made this change and that Adam made this change. So you just have to do it. Uh, you're going to share a form with me, right? So I can go into my Google Drive, me at John Miko, and see that you did that. You're also going to share something else with me. So I, I don't need you to submit anything for me to grade. Does that make sense? I'll just go in and start checking and say, did, did Malik do everything? Yeah. What um, you're going to send it to me at johnmico.com and another classmate. So when you send me the survey, you know, that'll be the way I get to check it. So everything you should share, you know, it, it's me at johnmico.com. All right. That's me. Does that make sense? Okay. So any questions on that? So hopefully you guys, you know, did that. Go ahead, Taylor. Yes. Send form, send the form. Okay, so the yeah, so you're going to send it to me like I'm going to complete the survey. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So not sharing, that's a good thing. Like, that's a good question because you can share the survey for someone to collaborate on it. Like, hey, can you help me build some survey questions? But I actually want you to send the survey to me as if I'm taking the survey. Does that make sense? Not, not that I'm going to help you build it, but you, you want a, my survey response, okay? Any other questions? So good. Uh, we are talking about uh, collaboration tools, and we said the big difference between you know collaboration and cooperation is that we have iteration and feedback. And we talked about a whole bunch of tools. We talked about email and text messaging and you know, multi-party chat, and uh, we also talked about you know things that maybe you don't think as much of using as like discussion forums. Uh, we talked about team surveys. You know, a lot of times you want a lot of people's opinion. You can do now a Google form and say, like, what do you guys think about this T-shirt design or whatever it might be? You know, whatever you're, you're doing, you're collaborating on uh, for uh, the, in, in the workplace or, you know, in your clubs and activities in college. Uh, we can do that. Now, uh, the last kind of content from Chapter 2 uh, that I, that I want to cover is something called, you know, uh, the version management. And we kind of hit upon this earlier. That's real important. If I want to collaborate something, that means I want multiple iterations and I want multiple feedback. So whatever tool we use has to be able to handle multiple versions and multiple feedback. And we can kind of group those into three levels. Okay, like we can group them first, no control. And that's typically you know, people's baseline, how they share documents. And it's probably the worst way to do so. No control is the example that I mentioned. If I send you guys uh, all a Word document via email and say, hey, could you help me with this? Well, what happens? Immediately, I have 30 versions of the same document, right? They're in 30 different places. And Sean may make a change to it. Ricardo may make a change to it. Randall does. I do. Now we have five different versions that need to be put together, right? So that's the, that's the worst way. That's typically the way, the default for everyone. That's the, that's the worst way to share content. And it still happens in organizations, especially St. Francis. It kind of makes me, uh, upsets me when we do things that way. Uh, but still, you gotta be the, the change agent in the world business as much as you can. The same thing that goes along with that is, you know, it's a little bit better, okay, shared files on a server. And when I say that, like, what is the shared network drive you guys use? Is there a shared network drive you guys use? Like an O drive, you guys know what I'm talking about when you log into Novell. No? You have no Novell network access? Sydney, what is it? Um, well, I work in a Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So uh, perhaps maybe not as a student, uh, but you have you guys know you have your hard drive as your C drive, and if you put in a flash drive, it may come up as an E drive or an F drive, right? Well, there are also when you log into a network, there are shared network drives, meaning you know it's, it's a server somewhere on campus or somewhere in your organization, and we can save documents to that server, right? So kind of a poor. It's, it's a step up from email with attachments because there's only one version of the document. But what happens? Okay, so you think about it. Here's the server, and you know here's the document, and we have I don't know three people that have access to it. So this is still problematic. Why? We have one document. They, these three people all have read/write access to it. Why is this still problematic? Why is this still a problematic way to share documents? Now, if it's just for viewing, it's fine, right? But if I'm saying you can all read and write, edit it, why is that problematic? What scenario can screw that up? Um, if you have like an important document, you have like three different people with like three different ideas. Okay, so here's the situation, right? Kyle opens it at let's say 9 a.m., right? He's he spends all damn day working on it, right? So not until 5 p.m. Does he close it? Okay. Maybe at 10 a.m., okay, I open it up and you know I spend all damn day working on it. And and Kyle saves his document at 5 p.m. So now Kyle's version is, and at 6 p.m., you know, I save my version. Well, all of Kyle's changes are what? Gone, right? All of his changes are gone because I overwrote it. So and it's not when we share something on a server like that, you know how we saw in Google Docs, we saw version history and we saw like um, the green was Daniel and the blue was Tim. When you go back, share files on a server, don't have any of those. Okay? So avoid these things for things that you're going to uh, ask for multiple people to update. Okay? These, are, these are the worst ways to share things. These are the worst, and that's kind of our default. So in the business world, it's better to, to, to not do those things. Uh, the next level, okay, the next level is what we're seeing in uh, Google Drive or Google Docs, and Microsoft has a tool much like this. Uh, when we start using the cloud, okay, when we store a document on the internet that, that's using the cloud, and we have tools that maintain the changes, you know, the, the version management, which we saw uh, with Google Docs. And, uh, that is that is called version management. That is, at minimum, if you're asking people to collaborate to update a document, that's the minimum level that you would want, version management. The third and final level is the one that you're probably not familiar with, uh, and it's called version control. Okay, so no control. The middle one is version management, and version control is kind of the highest level. This is where we have the most capabilities, and I want to go through these four things are what separates, in a lot of ways, and the degree to which they're implemented, separates version management from version control. The first one is user activity limited by permission. And the way this works is for us to limit things by permission, we have to have the two A's. Okay, the first one is authentication. What is authentication? In an information system, what does authentication mean? You see it like you know, you also see it like in, in, in sci-fi movies. What's authentication? It is and when we authenticate. You go to uh, you go to LPG. They authenticate that you're 21 years old. How do they do that? Yeah. So authentication is you proving who you say you are, right? You saying, I am Tim Show or I am John Nico. That's I'm authenticating, right? And, and, and we can do that a lot of different ways, right? You biometric markers, you know, retinal scans and thumbprints. What is the most common way that systems authenticate? You are who you say you are. Because that's for us to be able to give permissions, we have to first say we have to authenticate the person. Sure. Okay, that is the standard, you know, the baseline is a user ID and a password, right? And then we're talking, you know, biometric markers, those kind of things come later. But a user ID and a password, that's the first thing you have to have, that baseline saying, I am who I say I am, right? 
And if you give someone else your user ID and password, then they are you, right? They authenticate as you. The second A, that once we have that, we can do authorization. Okay, authorization is when we talk about permission, okay? So for every document, there are different levels, or everything, there are different levels of permission. There is read-only. Read-only means, hey, I can look at this thing, but I can't update it, right? There's some sign that say you can edit it and update it, but maybe you can't delete it, right? We want you to be able to change it, but you can't delete it. So there's also a level of full permission. And the way this works, and the tool that your book talks about is a good example of version control, is Microsoft SharePoint. Does anyone have an opportunity to use Microsoft SharePoint in the internship? It is a more robust work system uh, than Google Drive, Google Docs. It has some other tools. But the way that system works is documents are placed in what they call libraries, like folders, if you will. And then people are given different permissions based on their role for those libraries. So that's a that's a that's a kind of a differentiating factor. We can do this a little bit with Google Drive, right? I could, you know, if you guys saw that when I shared, I could say share for read only or share for edit, right? So we can do that a little bit with Google Drive, but but SharePoint is another level where, where it's all library based. The second thing that kind of defines version control is document checkout. So just like you check out a book you know, at the library, you're saying right now, hey, I have this. I have this for update at this point, or you're going to read the book, I guess. But I have this when it's, it's a document. Remember the server example I have? Well, right now, Kyle says, I'm checking this out at 9 a.m. for update. And it's not going to be checked in until 5 p.m. So then if user two goes and looks at it, they can read it, but they can't update it because Kyle has the access right now, right? He has the access right now. So uh, document checkout is something that it has. Uh, version histories, that's something that we saw, you know, when I looked in Google Drive and we saw the, the list of changes. So that's the, that's the third thing it has. And the last one is one we really haven't talked about and it's called workflow control. What is workflow control? What is workflow control? Anyone? Let's use an example I think you guys are all familiar with. So let's see if I can get this working. So what is, uh, let me zoom out. What is that? Have you seen that form, Maurice, ever? What's that, what's that form used for? Okay, so drop a course. So let's talk about that process. Have you ever dropped a course, Maurice? No. You drew from a course? No. Okay. So how does that process begin? Let's walk me through it. All right, so well, you gotta get the form first, right, Maurice? Yeah, yeah, you get the form first. Yeah, so you get the form, you need to put in what, your student number, your name. You have to know what semester it is, which that shouldn't be a big thing, but you have to know what semester it is, right? Um, you have to know if you're dropping or withdrawing, right? Because that's different. What's the difference? Drop at, withdraw. What's the difference there? Really? Yeah, seven days. Not, not that long. But after seven days, when you withdraw a class, it's a, it shows on your on your resume or your transcript as a W. Like, I don't know why that's a big deal, but if you drop out, it just disappears, right? Like if no one ever knows you were in that class, right? On your transcript. So but you, you kind of have to know, you know, is this past the drop ad date? So someone has to check that box. Maybe your advisor does it for you. But think about it. We know, I mean, because the system knows what day of the semester it is, does it not, right? So it knows that. So then you know the course, leave the course, the faculty member, you, know, you have to write all this in. Okay, so you have all those kind of things. You fill out all that information, right? And then what did you say you have to do with the next one? You get signatures, okay? So you sign it, that's easy, right? You can sign that. But who has to sign it next? Okay, so you're gonna walk it to your advisor, right? They may be in SCOTUS, they may be in Schwab, and they sign it, right? Okay, so they sign it. So now I have you and we have your advisor. What else? Okay, so that might be 
I don't know, someone over in Raymond Hall. How are you getting from your room to SCOTUS to Raymond Hall? Yeah. You're walking, right? Sneaker net, we call that, right? You're, you're walking from place to place. Then there's conditionals based on that. Like conditionals are things that are based on a condition. For example, Maurice, you're, you're an athlete, right? Yeah. So what else do you have to do that maybe a non-athlete, which I just learned a, a, a term yesterday, I used to do NARC, you know that term? Okay. Non-athletic. Regular person? Is that derogatory or <laughs> no? So I saw some students on campus. I said, "You guys look like you should be on like the, uh, you know, like the promotional material." You know what I mean? They're like laughing. They had St. Francis sweatshirts on. You know, and they're like, "Yeah, I got. We got an athlete." We got, and then they said, "And we got a NARP." I'm like, what's a NARP? <laughs> so I just heard that term. Okay. So, so if you're a student athlete, Don Kremel has to sign, right? Is that who signs that? Uh, looks like, I don't know anything about this, but if you're in education, looks like they're requiring a signature, okay? So think about that process, right? So you come to my office and Dr. Miko's in class, mm -hmm. so you maybe go there and Dr. Miko's maybe not in for a couple days. So think about all the problems with that process, right? All the problems with that process. How can we take this and make it better using information systems? And we should have this better. This, this, we, in this day and age, you know, nothing against St. Francis because I love this place, but we should not be doing this this way. Yes, sir. Okay, so ideally, this is what we should do. Okay, you can log into My Francis, please, right? And you see the classes that you're enrolling, yes? So you can click a drop down by that class and say, I request to drop this class, yes? And the system knows, hey Malik, it knows the class, it knows the section, hell it knows what semester it is, it knows what time it is, it knows if we're after the seventh day of the semester or not, it knows your student number, you're in my Francis, so it knows your last name, your first name, your date, it knows where you live, it knows everything, right? So, so then you say, I'd like to request to drop this class. What happens next? What should happen next? To who? Okay. All at the same time, not sequential because when Maurice is walking around campus, that's called sequential. You guys know what I mean by sequential? He's going one place, getting that signature, walking to the next place. But if you think about it, you start that process, Malik, and your advisor gets notified, the course instructor gets notified. We have that branching logic, athlete, you know, and the system knows you're an athlete. If it's yes, then Johnny Krimmel gets advised. If we, we know if you're an education major, if you are, there's some magical person has to sign there. And all at the same time, right, they get notified in what we call not sequential, but we call that in parallel, right, in parallel. So that, you know, we, all these people, so they get notified on their system and it comes across in my email or maybe if I was using SharePoint and I was in SharePoint every day, it comes across there and it says, is it okay for Malik to drop this course? I click okay, okay. Uh, if everyone else says okay, then it automatically just happens, right? Because the final step that we didn't talk about is once you have all those signatures all over the campus, then where do you go? What's your final destination? The registrar's office. And still, when you go to the registrar's office, what do they, they have to take that form, yeah. validate that all those signatures are there, and then make the change and they actually have to do it. We do all that automatically. As soon as these signatures, these approvals are all in, boom. And guess what? You can see like, oh, Miko approved, but, but the course instructor didn't. You know, and, and perhaps if it takes too long, like sometimes faculty are out, well, maybe if, if, if for example, Dr. Timmons is out at a conference, after two days, maybe it goes to his supervisor, which is me, and I can approve. You know what I'm saying? So you can have these kind of rules built in, and that's what workflow control is all about. Okay, workflow control is trying to move things through a system, move documents through a system so that things are seamless, okay? Uh, part of the science app. So, so you work through these things, yes? Much more efficient. Now, 
as an organization, we don't care much about the inefficiency of that process. Why? This is terrible to say this, but why? What's that? Who's it terribly inefficient for? Who's it affect the worst? Malik, right? The student, right? He's the one walking all over campus, right? You know, you might even say there might be a drawback to doing a workflow control system. What's the drawback? So we got to think of that. Information system wise, great thing. What's the drawback to that process? That actually at St. Francis University, we may say we never want to go fully like that. Why? Even if we could, even if we, and we can. But even if we could, why would we not want to do that? What's our differentiating factor, we say, anyways? Anyone? Why'd you come here, Kyle? Um, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Spend the rest of the class thinking about that. <laughs> Why do we say people come here anyways? Katie, I know you came from swimming, but primarily, but why? What what do you think our, our value proposition is to students? Mr. Boyd, the weather, right? Now, what is our value proposition to students? Yes. Right, okay, so think about that. Our value proposition is that you get to know, right? It's a friendly place that the faculty care about you, right? And if it just goes online, you're just a name, right? You're just bits to me. You're just, you know, I don't know who you are. You know, you come in my office, you know, we have a conversation. I see what you're wearing. I say, oh, you must be a football player. You guys had a great game this weekend or, you know, whatever it might be, right? They're, 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 that's, that's what you lose when you do this. So, you know, it's not always just about automating everything. You've got to think about what the drawback is to that as well. All right? So that's all um, That's all I'm going to cover in Chapter 2. I'm going to put out, and they talk about something called uh, task management in, in, uh, in there as well. Uh, but as like our grand finale for collaboration, what we're going to do Wednesday, we're going to start Chapter 3 on Wednesday. Uh, what we're going to do is synchronously means what? What synchronously mean, Daniel? Same time. So we're still going to meet at 9 a.m. Wednesday, September 7th. It's my 20th anniversary, so I, I don't have enough shit for that, so I'm kind of worried about it. So, <laughs> so I, you know, it's Monday, so I don't know. i got to do something. But anyways, that's my anniversary, so actually I'm, I think I'm going to stay home that morning, right? I'm going to stay home. That's the gift, the gift of me to my wife, right? So I'm gonna be in Portage on, on Wednesday morning, but we're still gonna be out of class. How's that, how, how's that possible? Daniel? Huh? Eh, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, we can use Google Hangout, but I'm gonna use a tool more, more closely aligned with the classroom. And we're gonna use Blackboard Collaborate, okay? So what I would like to do today is to test that out. So I'm gonna show you what that tool is. So get up your laptops. And I couldn't get this to work in bright space because I just couldn't. So I had to throw everyone into Blackboard. So, so everyone has Blackboard. It's not going to be much in Blackboard, but I want you to go to Blackboard. For, you're, you're, you should have MIS 102 now. Okay, so go to Blackboard. Do you have it now? Yeah. Okay. So. Here's what we're going to do on, and I'll send out a link and all that good stuff for a reminder. But we're going to click on that. And you see at the very top, this might be the only thing you guys can see, right? Tron, do you see that? You're not in yet? Okay. I'll, I'll wait until everyone's there. And click on Blackboard Collaborate Virtual Classroom Software. And we'll, there'll be a session. Right now, there's only one session that's for this class right now. But you'll see a session that says, like, September 7th. Okay? And click on that. 
Does yours look like mine, by the way? Because I'm a moderator. You're not. Yes? You see something? Okay. So click on that, and it should take you to a page like this. Yes? Okay. So we have to do this one time and one time only. So we're going to get rid of that right now. You see this? If you can't open the clap, download the Blackboard Collaborate Launcher. You guys see that? Is that hype hot link for you? Yes? Okay. Click on that. Download the launcher. And it's going to download, and then you're going to open that when done. Okay, so we're the, the only act you have to do this one time. This is like a, a little tool that launches the session. It's like you know some, some software. Does that work for you, Randall? Yeah. So if you, you if you use this in other classes, you might be all right already. Now this is virtual classroom software and you can use software like we're using or you can also like if you don't have access to a computer you see on the right hand side you could dial into this now dialing into it you get the audio but you wouldn't get the visuals that go along with this right and there's some other tools that we're going to see when we get into this thing Our internet's slow here right is it how is, your, is, is yours downloaded like how many minutes do you have left, Sean? Uh, 20. Yeah, 20, okay. All right, so when you when that loads, you'll get a little, you know, what, welcome to the setup. Just click next, click, click install. It shouldn't take long to install. And then click finish. So once that installs, you should be able to click join room and it downloads this little file and you just open that and it'll 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 download the it'll like launch the application. So it downloads a meeting.collab file .collab is and you just open that. Uh, you want to say run, you want to trust this stuff, you want to run this application, let's say run. Allow access if you have those things. Accept uh, selection cable DSL, that's fine. So, if someone do that already? Okay, so, so far I'm in the class, Adam is, Daniel, Danielle, people are loading. Now what's nice about this is just like I record our face-to-face -face class, I can record this session, right? So I can record, there's a recording built in, might as well start the recording. Welcome, Ricardo. So once we get in here, uh, I can show you like, uh, there's a little chat room. Hello and welcome. So you guys can use that as well. Go ahead, Katie. Okay. 
Or yourself Bluetooth. Where the speaker is. Uh, yeah, it's just the wrong place. Okay, so this is uh, called virtual classroom software. Uh, so you see all you guys, I gave you, know, you have right access. If I wanna take that away from you, I can. I'm like the moderator, so I can X that out so you can't write anything. Um, I can load content. So for example, uh, I can load, I'm gonna have to close this first, I think, but I can load PowerPoints. So it's gonna take, it takes some time for this to load up. Uh, but it's going to load up PowerPoints here eventually. Okay, so you'll see, I can be talking over this. Okay, so there's our, there's our, so you guys, I'm sharing this content with you. I could also uh, share applications, right? So I can share my desktop with you. So if I click on this, uh, so I click okay, uh, I could share uh, Google Chrome. Okay, so now I'm sharing that with you. You guys see that? Can you see that page? Uh, I'm gonna X out of that. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh, I can do the X out of that. Uh oh, that X out too much. What do you guys see right now? You don't see any content? Okay. How about this? You see this now? Okay, very good. So uh, I can ask a question and for example, I can say, um, do you understand uh, what I'm talking about? Uh, and you guys, you can hear my voice obviously, but you guys can respond. You can say, see this little check mark? Do you guys have this little check mark up here? You can say yes or no. So I see, you know, four people said yes, one person said no, and I can kind of see like, hey Sawyer, what's going on? You know, you all right now? Uh, and I can clear those kind of things. Um, you can raise your hand virtually, right? So I can say like, I get a notification that someone has raised their hand. I'm gonna clear that. Uh, you can, you know, if you're, I guess you can, you know, of what I'm talking about or disapprove of what I'm talking about. Um, you, can, you can chat here to me, you can chat to other people uh, in the class. Uh, I'm gonna try to share a video with you. Let's see, so uh, I can, this is, when I wanna talk, uh, I can use this. Okay, so it's the document camera. So to see me, I guess I have to come around here. This is probably gonna be ugly. But uh, you see me now, okay? So, uh, so when I'm at home, I'll share my video. Uh, and talk is what I can talk with, and I don't know what the mic is like here, but you'll hear my voice. So, you know, we're gonna try on, on Wednesday morning. So what you'll do is you don't need to come here, okay? You can if you like, uh, but somewhere where you have decent internet access, right? I don't know what your current status is in the dorm life. Uh, is the internet good in the dorms? It's all right. If you, what makes it better is if instead of using Wi-Fi, you can plug into yeah the Ethernet jack. That that makes things better. Um, you know, but we're gonna try uh, try to do that. Try to emulate that because that's the only thing. So, you know, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do on Wednesday is we're gonna do chapter three. Okay, so we're gonna start chapter three and we're gonna use uh, Blackboard Collaborate to do so. I will send out, so now that you have that launcher, you shouldn't have to do that. You should just be able to click, go into Blackboard, click the link, and actually, I think I can generate a link that I send to you, right? So you don't even have to go into Blackboard. So I'll, I'll email, look for an email reminder uh, with the link. Uh, any questions about this? All right, so I'm going to uh, close out here.
try to close out. And we are going to do a little assignment for Friday, but I need to introduce that assignment. Thank you, Joe, and good morning, everyone. Now, Joe just showed you how to do incredible things with Win. Thank you. Now, I feel very fortunate. Apps run just fine. The internet runs just fine. What are we going to do with all of this extra computing power? And the answer to that is that we are going to put a different emphasis on it. New workloads focus on solving brand new problems. In other words, we are going to start We're using all of this power specifically to help us understand humans and the world around us. So how do you do this? With no wires, with no markers, no external cameras, <coughs> no phones, and no connection to a PC required. Let's learn a little bit more about this amazing, magical device that is Microsoft HoloLens. This hardware allows us to take these visions, these ideas about these new products, and make it all real. Imagine a computer that allows you to put your images anywhere, and you can interact with things as a combination of the real world and holograms. You have a bunch of different systems that need to come together in one big symphony. Every time you think you understand it, it's like putting an onion. There's suddenly another layer of things which you suddenly realize, oh, of course, I've figured that out now. We don't have room for error, we don't have room for drift, we don't have room for those normal things that happen in a device. So it's working with these people across the world and bringing it all together into this bright new product. We envision an all-in-one device that is untethered, with built-in batteries, hands-free, and floating audio. You have to come up with holographic processing, you know, because you're constantly producing data every single millisecond. Isolate is so complex, why it looks very simple and pure. It needs to accommodate so many requirements to see progressive content. The audio components need to take in all of that information about where is my head, where am I looking, so that your brain knows that there's something real over there. The enclosure wraps around the user's head to provide great way distribution. We have so many sensors on this product. To read all those in real time and to do that in a very power efficient way requires the power of what they develop with the new version of Windows. We need to get the hardware just right so that we can sort of unleash that creativity in the world. I think we have great ideas. I think when we get it out to developers, we're going to get hundreds of great ideas. And that's what Build Conference is all about, right? We want to get it out to people, show them, hey, this is real and this actually works. Now, See what you can do with it. Okay, so this goes on. This is like their introduction of it in like I think 2015 or 2016 it was. Uh, this is a product called HoloLens. HoloLens, I think I said that right. Uh, but it's a little different. Have you ever heard of Oculus Rift? You guys ever hear of what is that? What is Oculus Rift? And Facebook bought Oculus. What is an Oculus Rift? Eric? Okay, it's virtual reality. So it's virtual reality meaning you wear this headset and you're in that virtual reality, right? This is a little different. Why? Why is this different? I don't know if you've got the gist of it, but you're wearing something. What is it? Exactly. And what do they call that? Do you guys know? Yes. It's augmented reality. So you still have your reality, like I still have you, but then there's something augmenting that, you know, that reality and it allows us, you know, to uh, basically have a menu for life. And it's, it's kind of a Google Glass, so it's like Google Glass is also augmented reality, right? So if you think about this, uh, this is brought up in our chapter as transforming the way we collaborate, the way we work on things, okay? And the example that you'll see in this little uh, case study is okay so you don't want I, ricardo has a light switch to wire right in his house let's say and he has no electrical ability maybe you do you know, electrical, 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 electrical. No. okay so that's a dangerous kind of thing right you to do that right so if you wear this 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 hollow lens right and you look at the light switch 
We can have an expert, right, who is looking at what you're looking, like collaborating with you, and they can be like pointing like to what you're looking at and saying, you know, take that red wire, you know, and like giving you instructions while you do it, right? And not just like telling you, but showing you in your pain of vision, like not that wire, this wire. Does that make sense? So you think about all the things, the ways we can collaborate and even teach. Okay, so what, and there, there's other videos out here, but we're, we're running out of time. But here's what I'd like you to do, okay? I want you to read this case. I'd like you to watch, you know, there's some HoloLens videos out there, and, and a lot of it is like uh, holograms, right? It projects an augmented reality, a hologram out there. Uh, and, and I'd like you to, so I'd like to go to YouTube and watch a couple of the videos. But question one is a question that I want you to answer, right? Question one uh, is, is at the bottom, it says, the feature provides two examples of possible business uses for a HoloLens. Think about the future impact of this innovation by identifying other industries that may benefit from the development of augmented reality technology. So what this class is all about is, hey, technology is cool, right? But how we apply the technology, the killer applications, is what really, really transforms the business world. Number two, we answered. So don't worry about number two. We just answered that here. Um, number three, I'd like to know your answers on number three. How can this type of technology benefit your collaborations as a student? Think about how you interact with tutors and fellow students on group projects, and how you seek and receive help from your instructors, okay? And sometimes when I'm traveling, I help my sons with math, right? So sometimes the way we collaborate is pretty like they, 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 they text me or they, they take a picture of their homework, they send it to me, I do it, I take a picture, I send it back, you know, and they say, they get this. But think about how that experience could be different with this product, right? Uh, number three, privacy concerns are one of the factors that prompted Google to delay a full release of the Google Glass when the security and privacy comes back. Key number four as well. Uh, and you can do number five, okay? so. I'm not asking for you guys to write uh, pages of information here. A few sentences about each of those. I'm really, the one I'm most concerned with is number one. I'd really like you to think, you know, and use your creativity, your innovation, you know, think about something. If you did an internship at a, I don't know, accounting firm, well, how could this help with that accounting firm? Or you worked in a marketing environment or Hell, you dug ditches for the for the sewage treatment plant. How you know how could we use this? How could that business use this feature? How could it use it for if you play a sport? How could they use it in you know football practice to make football more efficient? Right? Like, you know we could see and you, know, you put it on the quarterback and you see what the quarterback sees and you say there's the guy flat. You know I mean you could do those kinds of things. So I want you to think about how this can transform all kinds of processes. So come up with some examples. I'm really hoping you guys can share some. Um, all right, I think that's it. Tonight, Google assignment is due. Wednesday, virtual class, right? Synchronous, but virtual using Blackboard Collaborate. I will be at home. Uh, hopefully everything will work at home. I'll be in my basement, that's where I'll be. You'll be wherever the hell you wanna be. Uh, I don't care. You can, you can do it together if you like. I'll take attendance, you know? So if you're with someone, if like you and Sean are using the same device, Say, you know, I'm with Sean, you know what I'm saying? So that I can check you in. Uh, and then we'll see you face to face, the gold standard of communication on Friday. Have a great day. Yeah, sure. Let me let me stop the recording, Lee, and I'll come back.